Welcome back to Lost in Rosha, the ultimate journey through the Stormlight Archive. I'm Christian. And I'm Jimmy. Today, we are diving into chapters 23, 24, and 25. And as always, full spoilers ahead for the entire Stormlight Archive uh, published work. So books one through four and the novella. So if you haven't finished yet, we'll see you later. But for everyone else, welcome back to Lost in Roshar. Uh, we threw in a bonus chapter this week. Uh, you know, we've been doing two. We've done three here and there. Uh, this is one of those times where we got through the first two chapters and we said, let's throw in a third. Uh, the third one was a pretty short flashback and the other two were very much character focused rather than lore focused. Uh, so Christian made the executive decision. He said, hey, uh, I need you to read an extra chapter. And I said, you know, that'll be fine. So here we are. <laughs> Three chapter episode back after a little bit of a break. Uh, Christian, what did you do on your week off? I sat and stared at the wall wondering what my life was like before Lost in Rosha and <laughs> realized it was so much worse before this podcast. <laughs> I'm glad, look, I'm glad we had a breather. I'm glad I had time to get my life in order, even though it feels like I'm still behind on everything. Um, but it felt wrong. Did it feel wrong to you? Like this has become our little thing. I, I went over to my computer on Sunday and went to upload the episode and, I, and, you know, just the empty folder sitting there. And I said, what in the world? What, what have we done? <laughs> Dude, it's allowed some breathing room for me. Um, my like my actual video side of things has fallen by the wayside, more or less, since the podcast. Um, to be honest, it fell by the wayside before the podcast, but the podcast was my solution <laughs> to not doing videos. Anyway, um, all this all this talk about the way of Kings and soul might I've been, Oh, I got so much, I got inspired again and dude, I've been doing some, some heavy video work in this week off and it feels oh. good, man. The creative juices are flowing and um, I'm finally picking up some series that I'd left dead on the channel in regards to storm So it's cool. It's yeah. Cool yeah. Into it. I know people will be excited to hear that, uh, you know, whether it's a uh, one piece or stormlight, people love to see your videos and whichever one you post the other side will say, when's the next inter <laughs> other yeah. fandoms video, uh, which is a good thing. People want to see your stuff. So I'm glad that you got to, uh, it, to get some video stuff going. And, uh, I look forward to seeing that as always, uh, for folks who are wondering why we took a week off, I actually had some commitments. I couldn't, uh, make it work. Unfortunately, me and Christian have to do some weird scheduling because we live on opposite sides of the world and it just didn't did not work out last week. Uh, Christian was busy early in the week with some some job stuff, and then I had a wedding that I was a part of, plus a bunch, a plethora of health <laughs> issues that complicated my life last week. But we're back, we're healthy, and we're feeling good, and we're motivated to uh, talk about some stormlight. So we appreciate everybody uh, who reached out and was like, "Where is the episode? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Dude, I felt bad because like I could I, I could do a comment on YouTube, be like, "Hey guys, we can't record. I'll see you in two weeks." Uh, Spotify and Apple had no idea. So some people were like, where are you? Yes. Um, and, I, and I also can't reply on Spotify. So I just have to watch people ask. Yeah. And I was like, wow, they, they actually are waiting on a Monday, which is kind of cool. Um, also, I want to add, during this break, a mysterious package landed towards me. And yeah, you got a span read. I got a span read, span package. I suppose. I don't know what the, the, the term would be in pulled up. Yeah, the Charles rolled up and out of the what oh, the carriage from the Charles? Whatever. This this whole metaphor isn't working. Um <laughs> I got a leather bound from fans and it was the best thing ever. Um I was contacted by a listener of the show who had very, very kindly sent me chipped in with their friends to send me the leather bounds. So I want to thank Sarah, Valera, Blake, John. Jessel and Rebecca, guys, you have made my life with these. Apologies if I've mispronounced your name with my accent, but man, when these arrived, I couldn't, could not believe my eyes. Uh, you've had this for a, a while, Jimmy. Did you buy it when it first, when it first dropped? Yeah, yes, I did the Kickstarter. Uh, I plan on doing the Words of Radiance one as well. But, uh, you know, I've told you before, I collect books of all varieties and many different editions over the years. And it's still one of my favorite books I own as far as just like quality and presentation wise. I mean, it's and it's it's quality, like the actual um, the binding of it, I mean, is is very mm. good. And uh, I knew you would be pumped. I knew you would be excited to get it. And you sent me you're like, I can't believe it. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, it, it was like the announcement came out, right, that the leather bounds are back in stock. And I and I put a little like 
like save the date in my phone to go check the site whenever it, whenever it dropped. And we actually got emails being like, hey, Christian, like the leather bounds are back in stock. You should jump on this right now. And I did. And I went to the site. I'm like, oh, God, the shipping, everything to Australia. It was just like too much. And I was like, yes, another another year gone by, another, mm-hmm. another year without my leather bound. And then like straight after an email from those people, which is really touching and um, way too generous. And the nicest thing that anyone's ever done in regards to this whole YouTube thing and this whole podcast thing. So thank you guys. I cherish it. And uh, now Lost in Roshow is way more exciting. I can bust over in the leather bound and check out these chapters, but um, can't write notes in it. I'm not going to go that far. Yeah, I wouldn't write in it. Um, <laughs> and also now that you have your leather bound, we're actually going to be shuttering the podcast. This was all a grift <laughs> to get Christian you know leather bound. Uh, Mission accomplished. <laughs> thanks Pack for the cheese. Up, We'll see y'all later. <laughs> no, yeah, um, yeah. What? What? Uh, um, coming, coming soon for the words of radiance leather band. Then uh, another, another elongated break <laughs> until <laughs> words bring up. <laughs> until we get into that Sanderson mansion. I, I want to sleep in the Elantra. <laughs> I want to wet the bed in the Elantra's room. <laughs> That's my goal. Oh, Jimmy, you've just, you've just ripped up your golden ticket, mate. It's never happening. <laughs> what? I have a problem. <laughs> They're gonna be like, "Yep, Christian, you're right to come in." Who's the, the Jimmy? No, no, he's on the he's on the no list. Yeah, he can sleep yeah. outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Christian's in the Kremlin in the Kremlin ward. Yeah, Same he gave there. Mistborn a, a mid review. He's not allowed inside, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, you know, awesome though. Shout out to everybody who uh, who helped Christian get that leather bag. I can't think of somebody yeah. who would uh, des- not maybe not deserve, but appreciate that more than you and. What, what a great batch of listeners and uh, people that, you know, viewers from your channel uh, that we have here. And it's just uh, it's crazy. I started getting into the whole sphere of online discourse and, and making videos. What, about four years ago? And now I'm on multiple mm-hmm. podcasts as well. And it's just always uh, astounding to me how kind people are. And how inclusive people can be. And it does give you that little bit of hope that not everything <laughs> is so bad, right? That not right. everything yeah. is doom and gloom in the world. So from the bottom of Christian's heart and mine, even though it wasn't for me, I just want to thank because I know how much it meant to to Christian. So big shouts out to all of you and everyone that listens every week. Yes, we appreciate thank you guys you. a lot. So excellent uh we don't have a weekly poll this week christian we we ended up uh kind of scrapping it and i think it's good to have a little bit of variance in the show mm. we don't want to overdo the polls and make them lose their uh their mojo plus the kremlings weren't winning so i pulled the plug up <laughs> just like you know if they're not going to pick the right answers we're not going to give many answers yeah uh, <laughs> but we did get an email from a listener and you can always span read us at lost in and this one is from seth and Seth sent in an email, had some nice things to say as uh, he's been checking out the podcast and he just finished books one through four. Uh, this is a, he did it in six weeks, which is insane. Oh my God, that is speedy. Uh, that is impressive would, would be the word it, I would use. It's not lost in Roshaw face. That's all I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> It's not what we're doing here. Yeah, now you're now you're here at Lost in Roshar, where we will take six <laughs> years to read through <laughs> yeah. the first four books, uh, which is fun because we'll get to we'll get to uh, sift through this for the next few years while we wait for more of the books. But uh, had a really interesting uh, kind of question slash th- I guess we'll call it a theory. Mm. Uh, and I'll read the email here. It says, "I forget which episode you guys were discussing, but you were talking about how the end of book five will probably parallel the beginning of book one." I wonder if somehow Dalinar will sacrifice himself willingly to save the world from the desolations, unlike the one Herald who was abandoned unwillingly. To me, that would be a beautiful parallel for Sanderson to write. My other thought is that this could be a sacrifice where Dalinar on some sense, uh, in some sense, chooses to become Odium's agent uh, in some sense for what he perceives as the greater good anyways mm. just an idea thanks again for the show seth thank you for sending that span read in and what do you think christian i like it um thank you seth son son volano for getting in touch <laughs> um straight from the world no that's really cool uh, yeah i've i've dabbled with such theory before i had the whole my one went crazy with like oh um, who was it? Elokar's son is going to be Odium's champion and Zeth will have to kill him and Zeth's killing another king, but not to 
but for, but for different reasons to save the world. You the know? baby champion. The baby champion theory. Um, I feel like I've just... The baby just, champion theory is my favorite. <laughs> it's theory. just like Sanderson went dark, you know? He's just like, you know what, baby champion. Because um, like the whole the whole idea is that Odin would... Ta- slash Tarabangian would manipulate Gavinor into being his champion because he's there's this whole arc about him wanting to fight and everything potentially but i guess seth seth is going for more of a dalinar sacrifice angle which is interesting i feel like a lot of people have said this it feels like dalinar's arc is done almost yeah yeah so it's like what happens so for me I think this is probably one of the safest bets that you can mm-hmm. make. Like, I, I definitely think that this is in the realm of possibility. I think Dalinar, at so, whether it's a sacrifice or, um, you know, a, a offering to go and suffer through the desolations or whatever it might be, I, I, I definitely think Dalinar is doomed. I, I don't see him <laughs> lasting past book five in any in any way. So also, I think I think Adolin is prepped to become the main colon uh, or the main. I believe so you know, son, I, I should say, uh, to carry on that family name as Renarin's kind of doing his own thing as well. So uh, I think this is a pretty safe bet. I think Dalinar is definitely going to have to do something uh, slightly heroic and sad in book five. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly how it'll pan out. Uh, I, I kind of like the idea of Dalinar becoming Odium's agent for some Ooh. sort of like greater <laughs> good. Like, I think that's actually even more compelling than maybe Dalinar just dying. I, yeah. I think that's way more compelling. And it's like, he's doing it because he has to in a certain sense, but he's slightly in control of his old self, like some interesting conflict there. I'd like to see a lot of these characters be sort of shoved into very kind of abstract roles where they can show up in like book eight and be like, Oh, Hey, I'm Dalinar but different for a paragraph and everyone's like oh my god he's it's back Dally. Dally's yeah. back what yeah <laughs> i just feel like don't you think like we saw so much of how incredibly violent and messed up dalinar's life was in oathbringer and he's gone through all these changes and he's proved he can be a better man and that people can change but it's it's wrapped up oh, oh maybe neatly is giving it is being too too um generous but like he's with navani things are kind of healthy obviously he's still saving the world but it's like does there need to be another big gut punch to be like that fully tragic guy if you know? joe abercrombie wrote down that would be <laughs> <laughs> that oh would dude, happen, dude right? there would be no redemption or like <laughs> attempts at redemption followed by an ultimate failure yeah, let's say, I mean, Dalinar is Stormlight, Logan Nine Fingers, right? Like, I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's straight up. Yeah. Straight up. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I think Seth is right. There's going to be some... I, I sense the sacrifice coming. And I sense a lot of, especially after these chapters this week, some intense tension between him and his kids that will come to a head next book. Don't you yes. think with Adolin? I like. I don't know if Dallin is going to have to face Adolin down or the other way around, but I feel like that's coming. Ooh, right. Mm, I can see that. Major tension. I remember in Rhythm of War, like feeling like, oh man, this is really coming to a head. Their relationship. Yeah, it's never quite been okay. I also think that hearing Sanderson talk about the adaptation, saying that like the main characters would be like Adolin, Shalon, and Kaladin. Mm. is a pretty good indicator that Dalinar is not going to be around for the long haul. Um, <laughs> that makes me sad. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm reaching too far into it. You know, there, there's a lot of things to consider with a statement like that, but I feel like it's all been prepped for Adolin to come into his own in a different way than just like, it would have been very easy just to make uh, Adolin another Knight's Radiant. Right. It yeah. would have been very easy. Hey, look, he does the thing too, but he, his path is different. And because of that, he's going to interact with his men different uh, in the way he that he ends up having, you know, his power will be different in the way he uh, distributes it. And he has a lot of different feelings now that he's went through what he's been through compared to where he's at in book one. Right. There's a lot of growth there. So I, I think Adolin is prepped to be a major player in the back five for sure. Interestingly, did you know that they were once one character? Dalinar and Adolin. No, I hate it. Yeah, like 
it, he wanted that conflict. And then he's like, wow, this is like split personality. Oh, wait a minute. This is two characters. This I'm father thank and God. Son. Yeah. Because yeah. you mentioned <laughs> Dalinar being concerned about fashion. That'd be unfortunate. <laughs> he's like, man, being a war criminal sucks. What is the latest jacket? Check available? out my drip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no thank yeah. you no i'm yeah. <laughs> good call sanderson uh figuring out that yeah. it was two characters leave the split stuff to shalon uh, yeah and taravangian and taravangian yeah a lot of mm. that going around here uh yeah. yeah you know i'm not gonna lie just sitting here talking about it uh talking about book five and like what to what's to come and the stakes that are on the table Oof. i got a little tingle i felt <laughs> like, oh, like I, i'm excited still dude i'm so excited Book five is going to be like the 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 energy is going to be crazy in the fandom. We're all going to be like, I can kind of feel it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Feel the buzz and and I read a lot of books and I see a lot of new releases and stuff. So and I get excited for stuff all the time. Uh, But I remember like when Wisdom of Crowds came out uh, to finish out the uh, Age of Madness trilogy for Joe Abercrombie. I was very excited for it, but I remember just not feeling like that over the top excitement. Mm. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. One of the reasons is because I don't know if you remember this, but like we predicted every single thing that was going to happen in that book. We, as in you, or like yeah, the fandom? I think, I think you did too. Me and you, we talked about it. And I was like, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And it all happened, which is re- fine. I don't remember if I was I there for the release of Wisdom of Crowds or did I read it afterwards? Maybe oh, I did catch up by the time it came out. I thought maybe. you had, but it may, I, I might, maybe I was talking to like, somebody else yeah i don't like i don't remember my timeline of when i read anyway but like yeah so yeah i kind of knew where it was gonna go you know and that's fine because i think predictable plots are actually not a bad thing like i think in today's age a lot of shock and awe is like the way to go uh Mm. however if it makes sense i'm for it like i don't care and and that was very much a release where like i knew it was gonna be good i kind of knew it was gonna happen at least i felt and i ended up being right and uh it was great i loved it 10 out of 10, mm-hmm. 5 out of 5. I love the whole trilogy. But with Stormlight 5, it's just like there's so oh. many threads. It, it's like Wins a Winner in a lot of ways. And I know the oh, George doesn't write, whatever. Uh, but like <laughs> that book is so big. Yeah. And so many threads and there's so many possibilities that it's just like so difficult to figure out what is actually going to happen. And just knowing that things that you've held on to at this point, it'll be what, three years since Rhythm of War? Four years? Mm, yeah. Uh, things, 2020 November yeah so things that we have been speculating about for four <laughs> years will come to a close and we'll have a whole new level of speculation oh, after all my videos will be rendered useless yes and I can't I, it comes out. I can't wait to do a response video on YouTube lost in discovery exposed <laughs> exposed baby <laughs> champion cancelled what an idiot yeah <laughs> oh man and all our all our talk of the sun, guys, the sun, all our lost in Rosha episodes, useless. It's something, bro. It's something. Yeah, the sun. I feel good about the sun. Oh man. Oh my god. But that's the thing. You're so right. There are so many threads. There's so much to follow. So much to speculate on. And we're just gonna get. We're gonna bust it open. And we'll just be like, call it. What's he doing? Yeah. And I remember Rhythm of War just having like a nine month time jump right at the beginning. And I was like, oh man, I was, I, that never occurred to me that he would None do of us that. thought that would happen. Well, people no. who weren't beta readers, I don't, I, yeah. I didn't expect it at all. I never, I don't remember anyone talking about that, but the thing, the thing he does, right. He, he does for a couple months before release, he does like a chapter a week, right? Did Are you, you read those? Did no, you read I didn't. I, I waited didn't for the book. Yeah, yeah, I didn't either. I wanted, uh, I'm pretty big on that. Like if somehow we were offered arcs for book. F- Actually, if we were offered arcs for book five, I would probably do it because I feel like we could do a lot with that. Yeah. That, and that's the only reason is because I think yeah. that we could, we could have a jump start. We could do something really cool here on the, on the show, but generally I don't do arcs because I like being a part. I like the weight. I like yeah. the anticipation of it. Um, now, if I were ever to die before it came out in one of these instances, that would be very unfortunate, but I'd be dead. So I wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, see, how, see how depressing <laughs> my yeah, brain is? My brain is like, well, what if go, you bam. Straight to help. death. I need, uh, yeah, I need to see somebody. Uh, <laughs> I'm the Dude. test of this podcast. No. Oh, now he's relating to him. See? Uh, hey, see, you know, projections. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I feel like I, I've, I much, very much agree with you with the arcs. 
But at the same time, I'm the guy who's like, oh, Sanderson read a Stormlight 5 chapter at a convention. Where's the where's the manuscript or whatever? Mm. Whoever wrote this down, I want to read it now. I'm like, it does. I'm itching for it. You know, I it need a little, change, I need right? a hit. I need my next hit of Stormlight. It changes whenever you're you're trying to piece things together and you're also trying to create stuff around it. Uh, oh, man. I, I don't think we're going to get arcs, by the way. I don't think Sanderson There's knows. no way. No, I don't no think way. he knows we exist, and I don't know. No. <laughs> lost, like in, lost in obscurity over here. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Honestly, arcs, arcs to me are pressure. It's like, I just want to, I just want to enjoy this book. And I want to talk to my mate about it. I don't need to like read it before everyone else and be like, hey, told you so. Or like, just mm-hmm. wait till you get to this chapter. I don't care. Like, there's going to be another three, four years before the next one. It's on a race. Yeah. yeah. That, and that is true. There is something about reading something on release and knowing, especially in this case, it's going to be five or six years until we see another Stormlight book, which is bananas. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a huge gap after five. That's that's just sad to me. See, um, I'm, a pes- I'm a pessimist. That's all I can think about. Like, yeah, we'll get that book, but what about six years? I'll yeah. be a different person by then. But, but maybe we'll need six years to recover from whatever he <laughs> well, does. Well, there is one us. thing to be said. When five comes out, all these other books should get better because we're going to see a bunch of foreshadowing we didn't see before for events mm-hmm. that happen five. Dude, I was reading some of the like the, the preview stuff he, he'd done, um, reading at conventions and stuff that people have typed up, and it's such a vastly different book to what we're tackling now. Really, the chapters are, like I don't. I just the way people are talking. It's like you can feel how much the game has changed, even just in like the world of Roshar itself. People are way more open and way more aware of yeah. just like how th- how this place works. It's like their concerns are so different, and now we're just like collecting reeds. This chapter in a, in a f- under some rocks. Yeah, it's just like. I want to say what I read, but I know people don't want to hear, <laughs> hear about it. So easy, the, the easy on the book here. five spoilers. Yeah, yeah. And it just, <laughs> just I'm just gonna say Hoyd. There's a lot of Hoyd interaction, and I'm like, yeah, Hoyd's just hanging with the characters now. You spoiled Talking all about book five. The, now I know Hoyd's in it. Yeah. Oh damn it! God, you can't He's let me talk for more up. than thirty seconds yeah. without spoiling book five. I can't wait to get the hate mail, man. No, this community is so good. It's like even when they criticize, they always say, it's really good. Just stop. Can you just not spoil book five? I think one guy called me an idiot, though, right? Really? I think so, right? Who's that one guy? That one guy. Surely not another Kremlin of the crew. Look, look, (laughs) look, we'll get some hate, but. We're just we're just two nerds trying to talk about a book. Nah, it's been overwhelmingly positive. It's almost fun to joke about the negative response because there isn't one. Um, yeah. If there was one, I wouldn't mention it, and then I would <laughs> cry um, after we were there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, book five. Uh, send us your theories. We would love to hear more. Uh, you I like can this. I like reading. Sorry to interrupt, but I like reading. No, that's a good little segment. The um, span read segment. We'll have yeah, a little definitely. break from the polls, maybe. Yeah, you know, if we don't get a span raid, then we'll make a poll. But, you know, send them in early, folks. Uh, you know, these episodes go up Sunday or Monday. Uh, you'd want to get them in as close to that as possible because we record anywhere between Wednesday to Saturday. <laughs> so yeah. depending on when we're available. But send in uh, your book five theories, but also send in other theories. We don't mind at all. Uh, if it's big, big Cosmere stuff, uh, we might have to do a little research behind it because I haven't read everything in the Cosmere. But we are more than happy to uh, to go over some of y'all's thoughts because a lot of the listeners know more than us christian i didn't know if you knew that but some of the I'm, comments we get on the youtube i'm like holy crap <laughs> oh man i'm painfully aware of that and look <laughs> there's always going to be a bigger cosmere nerd than you you can't stop them there's always somebody who knows more um the, the minute i think i've got a handle on things someone's like did you know that the the grass on this planet affects the sand <laughs> that then affects the ecology i'm like oh my god you're a genius <laughs> um, yeah so there's always more to discover um i'm not here to be an authority i think neither neither are you right like we're not here oh, to be an authority. Not. we're just here to like enjoy it and i can um, barely read we're like that yeah we're the medium fan we're like we're not the casual but we're not like the i don't have we're a cosmic mural yeah we're the gateway drug 
Yeah. And uh, then you can look, go on the copper mine and then, oh, then, then that's what happens, man. The diagram appears before you <laughs> and before you know it, you'll have your own podcast. Oh, we're essentially a hyperlink to the copper mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all we are. <laughs> Lost in Rosha, the hyperlink to the copper mind. Oh, man. You come for the Cosmere, you stay for the banter is is our lo- uh, yeah, slogan Yeah, there you here. go. There you go. At least you saved for- it there. I was worried there for a minute, Jimmy. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> all right is it time do we have to yeah, it's, it's time. finally talk about these chapters yeah we're going to talk about some of these chapters uh you know we got 23 which is many uses which is going to feature uh some kaladin bridge four stuff and then we're gonna go chapter 24 which is the gallery of maps which is adolin and dalinar and then 25 is a flashback with kaladin and it's called the butcher uh which is a dope name for sure but let's yeah. start out with chapter 23 christian uh, again mm-hmm. we're not reading any of the uh the uh epigraph stuff from hoyd here uh we're gonna wait till we're done with this entire section of chapters and then we'll go back and read the whole letter uh but we're just going to cover what the actual contents of the chapter are so i'll give a little brief summary of chapter 23 for those listening uh bridge four is on rock duty and uh, rock duty finding stones to soul cast into food kaladin has rock and tef searching for knobweed to extract the antiseptic sap from a rock who can inexplicably sorry uh dyslexia is killing me today uh can see sill uh <laughs> finds now we quickly uh guided by her so basically they're going and getting these rocks <clears throat> and they're trying to fill up these bottles uh with the sap and we're getting in a situation now where kaladin feels like he's failing uh because people aren't wanting to give up their food and sill ends up saying kind of like they're selfish and cal says no they're not selfish it's just that uh, they're trying to survive and mm-hmm. to get them to want to live and to do more, you have to give them a life that's actually worth saving. And all that's very interesting. And it goes into Kaladin trying to um, sneak into the wagon yard along with Teft and Rock uh, to retrieve the knob weed. And we get a conversation between Kaladin, Teft and Rock where they start to get to know each other better and why they have come to Bridge mm-hmm. 4. And this is important for multiple reasons, in my opinion. I think uh, one of the biggest things is learning more about rock. I mean, that's what I was most interested in. Yeah. Uh, but also, it's, it's funny. We've been following Kaladin around. We've gotten flashbacks, but we are learning more about Kaladin even without the flashbacks here and him talking about uh, killing a man, though it wasn't murder and he was thanked by someone important. He cryptically says that he is a bridgeman because a light eyes did not take it well that he turned down a gift. Oof. Yes, yes. It, yeah, it's so cryptic when you first read it, but it seems like abundantly clear on the reread. Um, sure does. I love this chapter, dude. Easily my favorite of the three Yeah, this week. Um, love the bonding sessions. Love the rock lore. Made made me feel like, oh, wow, we 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 speculated about him for so long last, last time, and mm-hmm. we get a lot, a lot here. And... I, got, I was really interested. I did not remember any of that, to be honest. I remembered like he he fought for a shard or something and then got all this, but I forgot how you served your family in his culture. Mm-hmm. That was quite interesting. Um, it's so weird. Like there's so much good character stuff here, but I literally, I can't get over what I, <laughs> what I highlighted. I, I don't know why this stuck out to me, but right at the beginning, <laughs> Kaladin looks at a chull and the chull's staring at the sun. And I was like, surely there's a theory here. <laughs> I'm like, why? It was like, that left Kaladin alone, save for the chull that sat hunkered down in its rock shell, watching the sun with beady crustacean eyes. What are you doing? Why is it just staring at the sun? Is there something wrong with this chull? What's we've he say been, up there? We've been talking about the sun a lot. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and this chull's checking it out too. What's going on? I don't know. I was just like, why is it looking at the sun? What animal does that? Who is the Chol? The Chol is obviously someone who has shapeshifted. Yeah. And um, they've got a home base on the sun. Ooh, (laughs) (laughs) here we go. No, I don't know. I don't know. Like you said all that stuff. I'm like, oh, but I want to talk about the Chol. I've got it out of my system now. I've got it out of my system. Another note. Yeah, thank you. I've got another one, which I quite enjoyed which was um when kaladin's trying to talk to the other the other bridgeman trying to be like hey guys come on like this is good for us 
And it says the men even went so far as to give Kaladin a rude gesture before tromping back out. And I like that this isn't specified. And I wanted to ask you, what would a Rosharian rude gesture look like? Do you reckon it would just be the finger or would it be something else? Maybe a finger, maybe a uh, a hip thrust with a chop down with the hand, you know, like <laughs> kind of deal. Uh, who knows? Yeah, is, that, is that in the adaptation? Maybe they flip their eyebrows. Like, I don't know, man. Oh, Roshar's weird. Because I feel like he's not specifying it. It's open, you know? Who knows mm-hmm. what they do? That's a question. Next person who goes to like Dragon Con or something where Sanderson's at, ask him that. It's like, what yeah. is the, how do you flip someone off on Roshar? Because the thing was, right, like he described the bridge for like little, the thing that they do. And yeah. A lot of people interpreted it differently until he showed it. So maybe this is what uh, what needs to happen next. Do you think he practiced it in the mirror before he wrote it? Like, I think I think you would. <laughs> I think you definitely would just to get it right. There's something about that that's hilarious. <laughs> He's just like, okay, so right hand in front of the left, left in front of the Oh, okay. I messed it up right, again. Oh. Come on, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i love to, i love to see those little moments of the writing process like the little bit of like do you reckon he would read dialogue just to make sure it sounds cool out loud i mean i i know whenever i've written i do um i do the yeah. whole thing acted out kind of deal like yeah like costumes and everything well no not that not that <laughs> it, it takes a lot to get me to put on a pair of pants but i i would definitely <laughs> perform them verbally um to, to make sure they sound good yeah i never did that when i when i threw my and when i had my try at writing i never actually read it out loud i read I, your story out loud the piece that you sent me oh really yeah, whenever oh, I man. do any kind of editing for people, I I say editing as if I'm good at it. I mean, whenever <laughs> I'm trying to help people or, you know, read through things, I always read it out loud. Yeah. 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 It was so we we both had a little writing kick. I remember we'd send each other our stuff and be like, oh, okay, this is cool. Um, I liked yours. I liked yours quite a bit. It was interesting because I first, when I first started writing, I was literally like Brandon Sanderson copy paste. <laughs> and then I got into Joe Abercrombie and then I was like, oh, I'm going to be Abercrombie, Joe Abercrombie coffee face. And then it turned into some weird Joe Sanderson hybrid. Hey, there's um, a market out there for that. Yeah. I mean, I, I wrote about 20,000 words and never went anywhere else with it. Um, I don't know. It's just hard. It's just like it, to, to be a writer, you've got to commit. you got to commit. Oh, you got to commit. And, and you have to be willing to to hurt because your writing's going to be torn up and and most people are rotten at it uh, when mm. they first start and you got to grind it out. And Sanderson obviously gets a lot of flack for his pros at times for being a little bit more plain than, than others, you know, that window pane pros. But he talks about how he's actually worked really hard on that. And mm. I think sometimes people don't realize that, you know, they'll say like, oh, his pros is so plain, but it's like it's on purpose. So that means mm. that he had to like hone that and craft that to get it to the most digestible form that he possibly could. Cause that's what he was going after. Mm. And uh, it's just, it's a difficult thing uh, to, to, to be a writer and it takes a lot of perseverance, I think to, to get to the point where you can feel comfortable sharing stuff with other people or trying to get published. And uh, it's crazy. Even deciding like what to show, right? Like we talked about these chapters before we went live and we were kind of like, you know, the one down our chapter, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Why is it there? Uh, and I don't say that arrogantly. I mean, like, I really wish I understood more about, like, why these scenes are being included, you know? Yeah. And maybe we'll get there through through discussion, potentially. Possibly. Yeah. But I really love the banter this chapter, hey, between the three boys. It was Fair. good. Yeah. yeah. The walking mountain or whatever he kept calling rock. That was that was sweet. I like the whole, like, sneaking into the child farm scene. I totally mm-hmm. forgot about that. That was fun. <laughs> Yeah, it's very much like, um, you know, if you have a sports movie, it's like the group of boys like hanging out after practice and like trying to get some like beer or something. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 a camaraderie bill. A team building yeah. Thing. yeah, you're so right. Another little moment I captured was um, glass being precious. I, I found that to be interesting. Glass being a precious material on Rosha. I suppose you can't soul cast it. As far uh, I guess I ne- I did not do any research into this, but I was like, why is glass rare? Because I guess you need sand for, for you need sand for glass. 
I remember that moment when I was a kid and I realized sand was involved with glass making and I just did not compute. Souls and Shades Marred manifest as glass beads. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. So they are. Okay. So the beads in Shades Marred are actually glass. That I didn't know off the top of my head either. I mean, okay. That- that, that's that's what the 17th shard forum says right now that I'm looking at. <laughs> okay, interesting. I just thought it was an uh, interesting bit of, t- to highlight there that, that it was noted that it was rare on Roshar. Um, but yeah. Very, very interesting. Um, there's a whole debate about uh, solid spheres versus droplets of liquid. Um, this, is, this is the stuff that has went over my head. But... We should look more into this. Um, I got. I, did, this, I started I thinking think about this whole thing, right, with like gemstones and their currency, and I was like, "Where do those come from? Are they like manufactured? Like, do they put the the spheres around the gemstones within? Like, how do these come about?" Hmm. I've never really gone down the rabbit hole of like the currency of Roshar. I remember he described like what each one was worth way back in the Shalan chapters. And I was remembering, trying to really remember, remembering to to remember. (laughs) But I was like, yes, I will understand this system. And I never went back to it. But now I'm like, where did it come from? It's a good question. Where's all this money? Is there a mint? Like, how does this work? Is there a mint? Is there a a federal reserve somewhere that's printing? (laughs) Show me the money. (laughs) (laughs) Where is it? Um, Does Roshar have inflation? Yeah, yeah. I want the Rosharian stock market now. <laughs> I want it now. I want the Rosharian Grand Exchange. That's one for all the RuneScape fans. Out Dalinar, there. we can't fight Odium. It'll crash the market. <laughs> <laughs> just like pure capitalist, like Cosmere. Dude, I want um, what is it? Some um, something in bulk. What is it in uh, First Law? The bank. Oh, Valent Bank. Yeah. Valent and yeah. Bulk. Yeah, yeah Valent and Bulk, Rosha. That's what I want. I mean, if you think about uh, some of the Cosmere stuff, you could argue that a lot of it is resource dependent mm-hmm. and people trying to, uh, uh, you know, gather yeah. those resources. Uh, for Ghost the, bloods. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you think about it, it is kind of about power oh, yeah. and greed and that kind of. Maybe the Ghost bloods are the, are the bank of the Cosmere. Ooh. They might be. Yeah. There you are go. They, they're the Illuminati of the Cosby. <laughs> they <laughs> man, control everything, it. man. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about um, Rock putting shell dung into Sadius's food in many creative ways? That was quite I, satisfying. I support this. Um, yeah. You know, obviously, <laughs> it can lead to very severe illnesses, but you know, I don't like Sadius. So, yeah, I kind of like that there's poo poo in his food. I thought that was nice. What a legend. Rocks yes. like this was like if you didn't like him already, this is the chapter where you're like, this guy's a bloody legend. I mean, what about the fact that his uh his leader dueled High Prince Sadius? Hell yeah. Like what? And then was just like can completely destroyed. I love how he's just like, yeah, but if we just try enough, like we might like eventually we'll get a shard and then it'll get a bit easier. <laughs> Aladdin's like, dude, you guys are you guys are stupid. Um <laughs> Well, he has a whole talk about the light eyes and like their class system. And then he's like, you know, he's a light eyes. And then Kalanin's, how can he be a light eyes without light eyes? He's like, well, he has dark eyes. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's almost like a, a kind of a hint that all this is really stupid, right? Like, yeah. like this class system is dumb. But what's interesting with that as, from a law perspective is like, are the light eyes lower? In rocks in in the Hornader Peaks, is that okay, what we it? gather from that? Um, maybe. Or maybe. is it just like it doesn't matter? I feel like it didn't matter. I feel okay. like it, it was almost like Rock showing off how absurd, like the whole I- idea is, is that like, well, he's but he's a light eyes, like yeah, but it doesn't matter. Like okay, so <laughs> yeah, I went down a whole different route where I was like, okay, so why? Because the whole light eye thing, right? I feel like that comes from the whole radiant deal of like your eyes glow. Yeah. So it's like, oh, they're better than us, mm-hmm. and then hence the light eye thing in society. So I was like, does do things work differently where rocks from where we're where we you know got that whole 
basically bus station into Shadesmar and stuff. <laughs> um, what's the deal? Does do eye colors have a different significance up there, or maybe, like you said, it's just light eyes don't matter as much? No, well, very well, it very well could um, yeah. matter. Uh, in a different way or maybe they have something that they judge people by that i'm forgetting um they might have been dropped in one of the other books but i just really enjoyed the fact that he kind of points out that you know your class system is not our class system yeah <laughs> i liked as well the detail of like they're called the horn eaters and they and they talk about it here too and like why because they eat the horns and everything and rock's like yeah we have really strong teeth and i'm like oh my god yes this whole parshendi human hybrid thing I was like, dude, it's real. Mm. It is real. And here's another chunk of evidence. Well, also think about, so at the end of Rhythm of War, Renarin runs off with a Parshendi, right? Yeah, Shen, who is now Shen. known as, um, what's his new name? Oh, gosh. I should be knowing this. I, I can't remember, but I'm That's wondering so if that- bad. We I wonder if that, that will run possibly somewhat parallel to uh, maybe an older story about a Parshendi and a Rosharian human. Like okay, yeah, true. Relaine, having, having Relaine is his name, by the way. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if that's going to lead to them finding out that like there had this isn't the first time this has happened. They've had mm, mutual like that. relationships, and then hey, who knows? Maybe Rock is part of that or something. So I don't that's know. That's cool. I, that's actually really cool. I think you're right. That's maybe when we'll get the revelation. That's cool. So. Look at me, maybe piecing together something. There you go. Because I don't think there's any other like posh into human potential romance brewing. Yeah, besides those two guys. I don't think I'm trying to think back to. I mean, Esh and I, that was the last thing on her mind. Fenley, I don't know. She's a little prickly. It's been a minute. Like, I don't really remember. Oh, but dude, yeah, that's cool. Parshendi for me is going to be like brand new again. <laughs> like, I forgot so much. <laughs> I can just imagine your eyes glazing over. Like, in this rhythm, they attuned the rhythm of <laughs> snooze. <laughs> I can so <laughs> see you in rhythm they of They attuned the rhythm of melatonin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we love the posh indie here. We just well, I mean, I'm excited to reread that one. stuff. Yeah. I mean, now that I know what happened, like, you know, I, I kind of know what's going on. I feel like I can focus in on them a little bit more. I just kept thinking, like, how do you do these rhythms in the adaptation? Because that's all I'm ever thinking about. Yikes. I don't know. I'm just making my eggs for breakfast to being like, how are they going to do the rhythms? <laughs> in the in the like fifth season of the adaptation that's not happened yet how are they going to do the rhythms man well someone's going to worry about this they'll figure it out or if anything they might just cut it and find another way of having some you know what i mean like they'll i don't know the singers i mean it seems like a pretty big deal yeah i'm gonna um i'm gonna make a really um self-bragging <laughs> segue okay here. When I interviewed Sanderson, um, <laughs> I'm just going to drop that in there. When I was lucky enough to interview Sanderson for um, Cytonic, the third book in Skyward, I was talking to him about, because like they, they encounter aliens with such weird manners of speaking and communicating and different expressions, different, like it's so a like literally alien, right? And I was like, this would be very difficult in adaptation and, I can't actually remember what he said, but I remember him being like, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> or something to that effect, like him acknowledging it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, the same would apply to the Parshendi rhythms. But it hmm. seems so integral to them as, you know, characters and as a race in this world that you would have to do it in some fashion. That wouldn't be off-putting to a viewer. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that'd be a challenge for, for the uh, producer for sure. Yeah, Jimmy's like sounds like their problem. I mean, I I mean it's a tough one, and I, I don't think you can actually extract it. After I said that, I'm like, I, you really can't. It's too, like you said, it's too baked into the to the uh, species. I guess is what we'll call yeah, it. Yeah, it's like the rhythm of anxiety. Would you actually create a rhythm that they would speak to? Like, are you gonna go the whole like Tolkien? Let's do the language, man. Let's go all the way. Or will I just speak in a worried way that a human would be when they're anxious? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think because the whole have... thing is like the humans can't 
deal with how they talk. Like, what are they? Why are they talking like that? They talk weird. <laughs> Stop talking weird. Stop talking weird, man. Be be like being a lethe. For goodness <laughs> sake, for bloody Calix sake. Come on. Oh, we did, we did, we did get a Calix swear uh, somewhere in one of these. Did chapters. we? Yeah. Like like. Yeah. Oh, Callum was something off, and he was like, "Ishi, herald of luck." Oh, yes, you know, <laughs> he dropped that one in. That was good. Boys are it's getting fun. a little loose with their swears, you know. Let your oh, yes, honestly, yes, your Kaladin's... nose be nose. My goodness, Jesus, let's keep it G-rated. Kaladin, <laughs> come on, is it time uh, to go to the gallery, mate? I think it is. So, so that that basically that chapter ends off with Kaladin saying he murdered somebody, but he turned down a gift, and it's all very suspect which we start to see that situation that he's talking about kind of begin in the butcher um well you could argue it began whenever the other bright lord died but the butcher which is the chapter after the gallery of maps but we mm-hmm. jump into chapter 24 the gallery of maps which does feature dalinar and adolin so dalinar stands in the king's gallery of maps waiting for high prince rolan uh, to come and meet him. Dalinar's ultimate goal is uh, to follow visions by uniting the high princes, and he thinks he can start by working with another prince of a joint plateau on a joint plateau assault. Uh, since Rolon is it Rolon Christian? It's an I, so I guess it's R- Royon. Royon? Royon? Oh my god, I couldn't wait. Oh, yeah, you're right. Royon. Yeah. Sorry, folks. Uh, so since Royan has won the fewest gem hearts of all the princes, Dalinar tries to convince him that working together would be more effective. Uh, Royan is suspicious of this uh, because he's afraid of Dalinar will take gem hearts and shards for himself. Dalinar compromises, saying that they will split the gem hearts and that the first set of plate can go to Royan. Uh, Royan rebuffs this offer instead, insinuating that Dalinar is growing weak and deluded by his lapses from sanity during high storms. Uh, Royan says he'll think about a joint assault and leaves. Then we go to Adolin. And essentially, this is them arguing. And mm. they are arguing about uh, Dalinar in his condition. And Adolin tells him that Sadius is asking for permission to enter their war camp and investigate the threat to the king. Adolin is worried that he may recreate false evidence framing Dalinar. But Dalinar tells Adolin to allow him to because his vision said to trust Sadius. At this, of course, Adolin <laughs> oh, becomes man. irate, telling Dalinar that the stake of future of their house on hallucinations is folly. Adolin shouts that Dalinar and his visions are just figments of his imagination. Dalinar tells Adolin to GTFO. So <laughs> there you go. This is a short chapter. Uh, it really just introduces Royon and kind of his whole deal and the gallery of maps as well. Uh, and then more Adolin and Dalin are arguing, but this is Adolin taking a firmer stance. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And um, the last line kind of hit me when Adolin feels like guilt, where it says that didn't make him feel any less sick about having to be the one who said it, like to finally be like, dad, come on, dude. You, this is really bad and i felt i felt sad yeah. i felt you felt the weight of it then you're like man this kid really cares yeah um, and it's really just a really tough situation but back to royon dude do you remember this guy at all uh barely uh i just remembered him being the guy that down went to i couldn't remember his name until mm. we read it of course uh but no i don't remember much from him later in the series well I I did weirdly. It's weird. I was like immediately taken back to this guy because he dies. I th- I'm pretty sure it's in the next book. And I'm pretty sure it's like when Zeth pulls down and Royon's like, no, get out of the way. And Zeth's just like dead one shot. Um, but he like in a sense saves Dalinar. Like he gets like he gets in the way for a minute to give Dalinar a minute to move or something. I remember he died in like a heroic death. Um, kind of finally getting out of his cowardly ways or cowardly perception. You're like, damn, he's all right. He's a real guy. Um, yeah, it says uh, his death was defined by an action that refuted the criticism of his cowardice. He oh, there you go. life, uh, despite failing to injure Seth <laughs> at all with his attack. He distracted the assassin and saved Dalinar's life. Uh, Two other trivia notes that I see here are Royan was once insulted so severely by wit that Dalinar thought Royan might be a suspect in the attempt to assassinate Elokar. <laughs> and Lopez's cousin Puno, Punio 
was originally a member of Royan's army. There you go. Little fun facts. Again, yeah. we're just a hyperlink, guys. That's all we are. He's a tall, light-skinned man with a dark, well-trimmed beard. Oh, sound, sounds uh, like sounds like you, is, mate. This is like, mate, Sanderson. I'm right here. The adaptation. <laughs> I'll die from Zeth. I will gladly get killed by Zeth in the adaptation any day. I would. I would also like to see you killed by Zeth in the adaptation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just my eyes. <laughs> Now, hold on just a minute, mate. But, <laughs> I'm like, excuse me. G'day, Zeth. G'day, you going, Zeth. Oi. <laughs> hey, go, these, these shattered planes are bloody, they're bloody dry, aren't they, I mate? I my pluggers. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, um, are you guys still aware of Steve Irwin over there in the States? Do you know Steve Irwin? Yeah, of course. Of course, yeah. Of yeah, course. I want like a Steve Irwin-esque character in Row Shop. I'm like, oh, there's Chow. He's <laughs> six meters long. I'm gonna uh, stick my head with maths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pick up this gremlin. <laughs> They're known to kill men fifty <laughs> times their size. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, <laughs> god rest his soul. All what right, a legend. Dude. Um, yeah, what an absolute legend. And speaking of legends, how about the gallery of maps? What a cool area this is. Oh yeah. I love this. Uh, it is located east of Elicar's palace on the Shattered Plains. It is domed with large skylights lighting sh uh, shale bark formations. This building was expensive to Soulcast due to its large size and smooth surface. Several maps, including the prime map, are located in the gallery, as well as parchment listing each high prince along with the number of gem hearts won in accordance with the Vengeance Pact. I think that this room just sounds super interesting. Amazing. And you know mm -hmm. what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say bring back the old Roshar because this is like an old school epic gallery of maps. And then I'm thinking of how it gets later. People are light weaving like 3D holographic maps onto tables and they're like zooming and enhancing and like it feels very sci-fi in the current yes. stormlight. I like this, man. Give I me some that. good old soul cast stuff. Come on. Yeah, for me, this is uh, the little detail stuff, like in the settings that I, I really like. And yeah, the shell bark. I forgot what shell bark was. Do you remember yeah. what shell bark is? Dude, those like ha like hair esque tendrils. Weird. Yes, they are alive. They're organisms and yeah. they come in many forms. It's always has a rock like appearance with retractable tendrils. It is also ready for this cultivated. Ooh, and hello. use extensive <laughs> in landscaping across Roshar. Uh, although Rosharian scholars believe that shale bark is a plant, it is actually an animal simi similar to coral. Wh what? Okay. Isn't That's that cool? cool? That's very cool. Um, God, some of the stuff on Roshar just sounds kind of gross, man. Ten I think the word tendrils, that's what gets me. I don't want any tendrils. No, no I'm you. with you. Yeah, once I hear tendrils, I just start thinking of um, there's this scene in Peter Jackson's King Kong where they're fighting all these weird sort of worm-esque things. And I just feel like that's Rocha sometimes. I'm just like, nope. No, yeah. thank you. Yeah. All yeah, the bugs stuff and stuff. That I would find Ugh. to be very disgusting. Uh, and tendrils creep me out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> that's a word. Everyone has that one word, right? That like sends a shiver down their spine. People don't like the word moist. That's a big one. For me, it's tendrils. Yeah, moist is definitely up there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's really, really unsettling, isn't it? Um, you're like a um, bio. Uh, what's the word? You're an ecologist of Roshar. You're always like, look at this plant, I Christian. What's going on? <laughs> well, I do find it interesting because like there's life, you know, here and there's been life mm -hmm. around since the beginning, since before humans have been here. So I always yeah, wonder, true. you know, just like an evolution in this world. How does it work? I always think about weird stuff like this. Um, it seems like it's basically above ground coral reef. I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, and I guess it says Brandon's original vision for Risharian, uh, Fiora and Fauna. And this was like, a this was intentional. Like he really didn't mm -hmm. want this to be coral reefs essentially. So no, that's very cool. Yeah. You can extract oil from it too, apparently which is dope. <laughs> Damn. You're like, we should start a business. Yeah. Let's, uh, Let's, we can be the oil. Get that oil. The money, the money hunger. It's all coming together. So we'll get a bank. The wars we can we'll, start. We'll get all the oil 
and we'll just, you know, we'll industrialize this planet in no time. You know what this place needs? Smokestacks. <laughs> you know what? How about some, I want how global about warming carbon? on all my Cosmere planets. Yeah, what about Please. some carbon dioxide? Like, yeah. let's go. <laughs> Honestly. Um, but yeah, look, this chapter was very much a very cool location setting. Very, very yeah. cool. Um, a line that stood out to me was, you know, Dalinar's deep in thought as he often is. And it says, Alathkar was a light once, he thought. That's what Gavilar's book claims. That's what the visions are showing me. Nahadon was king of Alathkar so long ago. In the time before the heralds left, Dalinar felt as if he could almost see it. The secret. The thing that had made Gavilar so excited in the months before his death. If Dalinar could just stretch a little farther, he'd make it out. See the pattern in the lives of men and finally know. Went like... What stood out to me here was it when he says the secret, the thing that had made Gavilar so excited in the months before his deaths. What secret? What's he Se- talking about? The secret that he was going to become a herald. I, like, is that it? Is it that like? Because when Dalinar's thinking about it, does is, does he know what the secret is, or is he like whatever? Da- like something occurred to Gavilar. Nah, I- yeah, I think he he is observing that there's something driving Gavilar because he knows okay. his brother so well. I don't think he knows the secret. I think he's just right. saying whatever it was that Gavilar right. had that was driving this. It's um, interesting that it's in only the last few months before his death, though, because he'd mm-hmm. been you know he'd, he'd been pretty involved with things for quite a while. It wasn't it like oh like it, yeah, so it's like hmm, something more mystery changed in more those mystery. last few months. Yeah. Yeah, he got he something big happened. Who knows what, but something happened. Yeah. Gavilar's just the big. Um, what's what's that? What is? I can't think of the storytelling term, but what's that? He's just waiting. He's waiting there to have a big bombshell one day. And he's a uh, an enigma, a wild card. Yeah, yeah, but there's like a there's like a chat. Yes. <laughs> no, this is oh, it'll come to me. There's a storytelling term. Um, check out. Why I, check that's out. what I was just thinking of. Is that it? That's not it, is it? I don't think. I don't, I don't think so. I think it's usually a uh, kind of a. Oh, now, now you're making me, making me uh, panic here. I'm thinking a lot of things. Chekhov's gone. Red herring, but these are not it. <laughs> so it's a narrative principle that states that every element in a story must be necessary and a relevant element should be removed. For example, if a writer features again in the story, there must be a reason for it, such as it being fired on someone in the plot. So I think he definitely is essential. <laughs> I think he definitely yeah, matters. He's just dangling us in front of us. Like he's dangling the carrot being like, Gavilas, what did he do? And we're just like, ah. Oh. And, you know, me. like we have an idea of some of the stuff he was working towards possibly, but mm. there's going to be some other rug pull there for sure. Definitely. Um, oh, wait, I got it. I've got a. <laughs> there's one more line I needed to I needed to talk about here. I hope it's in this chapter. I think it was. But I think the strap was mentioned. Did you pick up on this? Oh, no. Oh, yes. Here we go. In Adolin's epic rant, like I was feeling the anger and the fury. And then this is the line that I was like, yes. <laughs> he goes, look at the king. He sees a killer in every shadow and a worn strap becomes a convoluted plot to take his life. Um, just take out, take out all that and just go. And a worn strap becomes a convoluted plot. <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> strap haters unite. Yeah. <laughs> but thankfully um, we didn't have a strap uh too much strap here that was it no no just a, just a brief mention of the strap thank you adolin just to keep my hatred flowing <laughs> flowing <laughs> that's the butcher kinda, uh, yeah that's kind of that chapter and then we move on mm. to chapter 25 the butcher which is a flashback very brief uh but essentially cal uh over here some villagers speaking poorly of his father's work accusing him of stealing the spheres and suspicion of how Laren can write cal meets with his mother H- hasina is that how you mm-hmm. say it yeah hasina. uh and then basically she says hey don't hate them they respect him but they're intimidated and then the power of having uh the power of being able to save a life is not one that should be taken lightly and it causes all kinds of different power dynamics between people. And then the new city Lord Blight Lord Roshone, Rosh, 
how, how do you say it? You got it. Uh, yeah, you got it, man. Rashon yeah. uh, shows up and he is not happy to be in this backwoods Rosharian village city, whatever. And he blames <laughs> Liren for it because Liren was not able to save uh, Winslow. And yeah, it's going to get way yeah. worse with this new city lord in town. And Rashon is a jerk. What I found interesting, just as you said it just now, the the parallels between Kaladin and his and his mum. So like in the previous chapter, Kaladin was defending the bridgemen, being like, they're not like mm-hmm. you know, it's not their fault. They've just got nothing yeah. to live for. And he's kind of having the same moment with his mum here. And her mum's like, No, no, they're not bad people, dude. They're just, you know. So that's cool. He's learned from his mum. A thing that did not occur to me. I mean, yes, that fact has occurred to me, but not so obviously as um, without this discussion. I this kind of let me down a Roshon um, nostalgic rabbit hole. Not not too much of a rabbit hole, but just reminding myself um, who he was and how he got here. Do you remember like how he ended up in Hearthstone? All I remember is that it was by like really bad luck, or didn't like was it something to do with a marriage or something? Am I wrong? Well, it plays more deeper into the plot and it kind of makes it feel like a, quite a small world. It'll come back to you as soon as I as, as soon as I tell you now because it's a plot point in Words of Radiance. So Rashon was a like a quite close with Elika and he had a lot of shops across Kolina and he because he was friends with Elika who was a prince at the time, he could like, you know, further his own interests and become a stronger businessman and make more money and blah, 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 blah. And he had other silversmiths who were like a competition and he wanted to eliminate them so he could make more money. And those two elderly silversmiths happened to be Moash's grandparents. Is this starting to ring a bell now? What he did to oh, those yeah. people um, is, <laughs> let me remind myself um yeah he just but he he gave them false charges and they were awaiting a trial but they were so old they just died in prison um so that's pretty sad and that's why moash hated elika and we had this whole like this whole conflict of interest at the end of words of radiance there and um when Dalinar found out found out what happened, he wanted to strip Roshon of his rank and wealth, but political pressures forced him to instead exile Roshon to a place he couldn't do any more harm, i.e. Hearthstone. So there you go. Ah, uh, and then, you know, obviously we know he ends up getting uh, whacked by Moash later on uh, and ends up marrying uh, Laryl. Who, does, uh, who gets whacked by Moash? Roshon, right? No, no, he's he's alive and well, dude. Is he really? He, get, he gets punched in the face by Kaladin when he visits his parents, though. <laughs> Later on in Rhythm of War, I'm fairly sure it is. Now he's still. I think he's just like a drunk alcoholic now. I'm pretty sure he's still kicking around, just chilling in Hearthstone. No, Chapter Eight in Rhythm of War. Kaladin talks with Moash. Moash says he killed Roshon for revenge. What? Yeah, he he gets yeah because I remember him dying. I just couldn't remember where it was. Yeah, Moash oh. kills him, and so it then it leads into a uh, a thing where Kaladin's like, "I didn't tell you to do that type of deal. Like you took out the revenge, and that's like part of the rift between them." But also, oh my god, I totally forgot that. Hey, I got one finally. I finally <laughs> remember something. Uh, Hell yeah, there you go. Uh, Laurel or Laurel, uh, the girl Kaladin, you know, was sweet on earlier, ends up marrying Roshone, and then eventually even though it was a forced marriage, Laryl ends up defending Roshon to Kaladin. And it's like, we've been married for many years and I've been very happy with this arrangement. And I do remember this. I do remember that. This is crazy, dude. Yeah. I totally forgot that whole thing between Moash and Kaladin. Whoa, dude. Bro, he we finds were Moash at, it's gonna be brand new. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Honestly, he finds Moash at a corner of the room, holding a knife to Roshon's neck. Moash slits Roshon's throat, killing him. Well, you know, it's crazy. There are like videos of me reacting to Rhythm of War from years ago. And I definitely have talked about this, you know? <laughs> yeah, I did. You know, like, yeah. I've definitely talked about this. And now I'm like, what? He died? Like, I mean, bro. Human brain just, is so flawed, honestly. I, uh, 
I've been reading one piece and doing vlogs and I'll forget something from walking downstairs to upstairs to film it. Like I, it just is, you know, when you read as much and, and you have all this stuff going on in your head and the potential of what has happened in the series, like what's going to happen. So, you know, you could be like, no, that definitely happens. Like, no, it hasn't happened yet. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. It's a theory. I forgot. Oh uh, that happens God. to me in a song of ice and fire all the time. It's so weird what sticks out to you. Like right now I'm rewatching Lord of the Rings, right? And it's like the weirdest lines and gestures I will remember perfectly. Like yeah. Yeah. this moment in the two towers when they're setting up for, um, see, I can't even remember what the freaking battle's called, but I can remember this Helm's line. Deep. Helm's deep, right? And then when Aragorn's like, Gondor will answer. Like the way he shakes his head, I'm like, I know this exactly. I know this moment <laughs> exactly. Gondor will answer. But I can't tell you Roshan died. Well, you. now you remember. <laughs> yeah, now I remember, man. Look um, to the east in the morning of the fifth day. Oh, oh, what a so great good. <laughs> you know, those so, movies are pretty good. Oh, I've heard they're, heard yeah. they're up there. Yeah. No, but now that I'm watching them again, starting to appreciate them. They almost feel underrated to me because like, I remember oh. them for the nostalgia, but then you watch them like 25 <laughs> years later and you're like, wow, these are still the best. Yeah, like, these are still bloody incredible. Like, so good. And I can't. That's what part of me is like. This part of me is like, man, I kind of wish more fantasy stuff went to movies. I know it's hard, mm. but like Mistborn, for instance, could be an epic fantasy movie trilogy like none yeah. other. It could be so good. Yeah. Oh, I just feel like so much was perfectly aligned for lord of the rings you know that perfect balance of um yeah like so many practical effects i'm watching it now i'm like this is amazing still sure yeah. like golem's a bit rough sometimes the slow-mo is cringe yeah it yeah look they have some rough rough moments but for the most part it holds up it does really holds up and i think it holds up better than uh Star Wars, which I know someone's going to be mad when I say that. <laughs> I've never really gotten super into the Star Wars anyway. so I'm not into it either, but I watched uh, the original trilogy for the first time like two years ago, and it was like, good. Like four, five, six? Yeah, four, like five, the, six. But, yeah. uh, I was... It, it, it aged decently well, but, mm. you know, there's still there's stuff there. There's stuff there where you're like, oh, okay, okay. The thing is they keep like remastering the effects on those, right? So, yeah, and also let's be fair, that was shot thirty years before <laughs> Lord oh, of the Rings. So like, yeah, I'm not dude, being it's fair so like it's a, for the time, it's freaking incredible. Like, what the hell? How oh, it's they an achievement for do sure. All that it's it's ridiculous. Maybe, but yeah, uh, Lord of the Rings. I don't know, dude. It was just perfect. Maybe I don't know. Stormlight will mm. be that next Oof. level up. Like we had Lord of the Rings, then we had Game of Thrones. Maybe Storm. I mean, Stormlight is definitely oh. in the fantasy genre to me is like the clear contender of that next thing like oh i hope so man the thing is right i was i was thinking about this the way of kings is so slow it is it's like and it's getting to the point now even you and i are like maybe three chapters this week you know mm -hmm. because we're past that sort of initial first chapters first time at locations we're kind of settled in now yep and uh, we're feeling it a bit more. And I'm just just like, what is the secret to this series? Like, how, who is this first book for? How do you recommend it? Why is The Way of Kings so good? And how can you encapsulate that in, into an adaptation? And I I think it's it all revolves around how satisfyingly all the plots and character beats come together at the end. Yes. It also has a different feel than a lot of the fantasy series. And mm. I think that goes a long way for people. Yeah. Uh, there, there's also not a ton of series ongoing right now that have this scope. Like simply it, it is almost the only show in town at the moment. Uh, I know that there's some self pub stuff and a couple, you know, four or five book series, but no one is setting out to do the 10 book thing. And uh, it's major. Yeah. I got to keep reminding myself of that. This is book one of 10. 10. Crazy. That's I had someone comment crazy. on my uh, my YouTube channel on my review and was like, I thought the first 60 or 70 percent of this book was so boring and I <laughs> loved the last like 20 or 30 percent. It was amazing. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of how it is. And they're like, it was worth it. And I'm like, yeah, it's basically how I felt. Basically. Like, yeah. And then what was the radiance down. was you would. What do you mean? I, would, I was just down. I was down to, to take it slow. Like my first. Oh, yeah. I wasn't in a rush yeah. at all. I read it over like three months and I was just I was chilling and. 
a lot of times, especially people who read a lot, you know, they just want to know what happens next. They don't have time mm-hmm. to take breaks for learning about the culture, the ecology or whatever. But whenever I first got into it, I was just in a perfect mood and uh, it just it worked for me. Yeah, likewise, man. That's why we're here today. Yep. But then, then words of radiance came. I'm like, one yeah. week, I'm done, mate. Give me that, the next look, one. <laughs> that's the book I'm, I want to reread, like just in general, because I, I have it so highly regarded in my brain. Oh, I'm like, same. is it still going to be that high? Dude, I remember reading it and be like, Storm of Swords, words of radiance. Yeah. I'm, uh, they're, they're my two goats. I would put words of radiance in my top 10, possibly top five. Yeah, like fantasy books, specifically fantasy books. Uh, it's yeah. just for it's for like if you're talking about climaxes and just like big moments. I mean, it's it's up there, dude. Sanderson yes. really brought brought it home for that. He, he really did. And I wonder if it will ever be topped. You know, it's gonna be tough, know. dude. It's gonna be tough. I don't know. Um, but back to the matters at hand, dude. The butcher. Besides our little roast show and recap. I like, um, you know, we talked about the, the location of the last chapter of the gallery of maps and why that's so cool and the soul casting and all that, all that stuff. Um, weirdly enough, Krem was kind of interesting here <laughs> with the with the build up of Krem and how buildings grew st- stalactites, like the the things that you see in caves, those sharp sort of Ooh. icicle esque, yeah, 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 things. I'm like, that's cool. That's very and, cool. And his mom's just like cleaning that up casually during this conversation. <laughs> Me and mom um, were like fawning over it. Like, this is amazing. She I'm like, wow, that world building. Yeah. Um, all right, Jimmy, I need a, um, like, uh, a jingle for like tinfoil theory time or something. Grab your foil and make a hat. We're lost in Roshar and it's time for a conspiracy. I don't know. I, don't, I got nothing. Hey, man, I'll take it. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Just, just follow. Just follow me. Just follow me. And, down the uh, rabbit hole. Down, down we go, mate. Um, like, like we've done before. Just tie the rope up. Just, just let me rappel down, and you hold on. All right. I got you. All right. Okay, so it's with Kaladin's parents, and um, Kaladin's dad's being a bit bit pessimistic right and uh she goes he always gets pessimistic at times like this i do not liren said she gave him a look name one other time meeting my parents cal's father pulled up short blinking storm winds he muttered let's hope this doesn't go half as poorly as that cal listened with curiosity he'd never met his mother's parents they weren't often spoke of Oh my goodness, dude! Come yep, on, that matters. That matters. Come on, <laughs> surely. Oh, that matters so much. Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. Firstly, we got the whole like, oh, meeting the in-laws. It was so tough. But this is Rosha. This is Sanderson. This is Stormlight. And these are mysterious peasant, uh, peasants' parents <laughs> who weren't <laughs> often spoken of. Why? Why would they talk about his grandparents? Not to mention the fact that Hasina is also very, I'm, you know, she's different than Liren, and she's teaching Kaladin lessons, and she's talking about the power dynamic between someone who has the power to save a life and to not, and it relates to Liren, but it could also relate to maybe a herald. Oh, that's, I mean, Jimmy, taking the words out of my mouth. Herald spotted. Sound oh, the my drums. God. The, another Herald has been spotted on Lost in Russia. No, but seriously, who is she? Who is Hasida? Really? Oh, my goodness. What's going on here? Who's her family? Um, probably should have read up on this before just throwing this out there. That's um, a bombshell, dude. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I don't. I just feel like... Fantasy, if you've got a mysterious family member that's not, not often talked of, definitely a superhuman, you know? Yeah. Are we both scrolling on Hasina's uh, page on the Copper Mind right now? That's what it feels like. <laughs> There's just too much. All right, Hasina's parents. All right, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. Thank goodness. 
All right. <laughs> One of Hasina's parents is not dark-eyed. And since Hasina describes her father as stubborn as a light eyes, rather than actually light eyed, it is likely that this refers to her mother. They are of a higher social standing than their daughter. The initial meeting between Liren and Hasina's parents goes quite poorly. Hasina's parents are rarely mentioned, particularly around her children. Hmm. However, she is still in contact with them. And when the family falls on tough times after the arrival of Roshon, Hasina's parents offer aid to the family. Let me see where that's. Okay, that's linked to Way of Kings chapter 44. <laughs> so I'm curious in 15 years when we read that chapter to see w- like how the parents off- <laughs> offer aid. Because like, do they span read her? Do they show up and be like, hey, we're here to help? Yeah, I don't remember them ever being present physically in the book. So I Either. have a feeling it's going to be span read. Yeah. Or, ooh, or maybe Hasina's like, hey, just heard from my parents. And it's like, how though? Hmm. Herald magic. Or like Hasina's like off somewhere else that we don't know about or something. <sighs> because man, Kaladin, son of Tanavast. Oh my God. Come on, man. His grandpa is just honor. <laughs> His grandpa. <laughs> and, and like Liren met honor one day that's why he knows about rot's brand i don't know that's this is this is not working um, <laughs> but we'll see we'll see just take note of it guys take note of it yes we'll, uh, cena kaladin's grandparents big question mark yeah and i know it. i can feel it i can already i'm scrolling through the youtube comments someone's like has seen his grandparents or this person and this person great episode <laughs> and uh, that'll be it we'll see kaladin's grandma is actually tress from trust in the emerald sea oh man do you do you want there to be some trick to his family is that what you do as a reader as a fan mm, all right so i i don't know how i feel about it i, I don't i think i'm indifferent towards the idea but i think it I, i've said this since the day one and we've said it here on the podcast like i think kaladin is more than just a knight's radiant i think it, he is special uh beyond that so i think it would make sense for that to come through heritage because if not like how would he have been picked right mm. yeah how do it's you feel do- it's a doozy right like i ugh, it's like i like the i like the chosen one trope sometimes but i mm. like that Kaladin's just a dude that struggles as well Can not we everybody have- has to be a skywalker right exactly yeah oh my god yeah exactly so it's and then imagine being sanderson contending with all this in your head oh it's like insane. i've got to write this there's all these tropes there's all these preconceived notions there's all these expectations um how are people going to respond what kind of story do i want to tell with kaladin ultimately mm-hmm. what is the point of this character um, it's really, it's really a delicate thing to decide, and maybe we'll never know. Maybe some things will be left ambiguous, and I kind of want that by the end. I don't want to know everything, like we, like we've spoken about before. I don't want to get to book ten and be like, "There's no point in talking about this series anymore because I understand everything." I don't want that. I think that there's a chance that could happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is probably one of the most meticulously planned out series of all time. Uh, coming mm. from one of the most meticulous planners of all time. And I feel yeah, like you're probably the right. Big, the big questions will be answered in the series, uh, which a lot of people, you know, for, I think for most Sanderson fans, that's one of the reasons why they like him so much. Uh, you and I mm. are definitely of the more we like to speculate. I mean, it's kind of what we do all day long, right? Uh, Dude, people will be finishing book 10 and I'll be like, why was that child looking at the sun in the way? Dude, it is? <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. What was going on? If that gets answered at some point in the series, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose it like some other co- some other Cosmere story. Like someone's got a telescope and they zoom in and the chill's just staring at them. They're like, whoa, <laughs> he's on to us. It was actually in that exact moment when Lord <laughs> Ruler. Oh, man. The chill is the Lord Ruler of Mistborn. <laughs> he's Condra. It's yeah. going to make those kind of statements and we should clip them and put them on like TikTok. So people are like, what? They're breaking, they're breaking yeah. the fourth wall over there. Lost in Russia. And they listen to it. And it's just the most disappointing podcast. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I want, yeah. I mean, 
gosh i don't know how i feel about those videos with like the subtitles and it's not just subtitles it's like every word is up and for every second like on tiktok gotta gotta keep YouTube your shorts. Attention, bro. did you know that in chapter 35 of the wave kings that the chul like it's just it's just, it's just burning my brain when i see those things that's the point bro yeah, you yeah remember. I, guess, I guess i'm missing the point whereas i'm like the video I'm working on now, it's gonna, it's just like there's already like a one and a half minute just pure intro of hype. I'm just I hyping up this video and it hasn't even begun yet. I mean, your stuff's so cinematic too. I can't wait. It's like I'm low key working on the adaptation, mate. Just me and my <laughs> laptop. It's all coming together. <laughs> it's, all come, it's all gonna be worth it in the yeah. end. But yeah, man, three chapters down. I think the pace might increase. I'm getting a feeling that um, these episodes might cover more chapters as we continue. Maybe. I don't know. I think three is about max for me, time commitment wise. <laughs> Depending <laughs> on how long they are. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. I think any more than three would be too much. Um, I agree. I agree. Because even though these were three pretty light chapters, we've done a decent, like, I feel good that this episode was longer, seeing as we had a week off. Um, yeah but yeah i think yeah. three is three is the cap yeah. i think we have to do three next week because we'll be actually ending we'll be at the end of so, oh, so dude, actually really? we can we'll just hammer this out on air and let, let everybody hear our conversations uh so there's three <laughs> chapters left and okay. uh 28 is the last one which would be the third chapter but we also have to go over hoyd's letter True. so should we do two chapters and then do one chapter in hoyd's letter Okay, look, the thing with the thing with Hoyd's letter, as I remember it, oh, <laughs> we really are having our like post episode. What are we doing next week, chat? <laughs> Live here. That's great. Um, okay, uh, I'm just seeing what the last chapter is. Decision. Mm. Decision. It's a pretty long one, I think. It is a long one. All right, let's let's roll with that. And um, you know, if we're feeling spicy, we can maybe we can have a few span reads as well. To, yeah, to beef up the beef up the app. Uh, yeah, so go. next episode we'll do uh we'll do twenty six and twenty seven, and then we'll have twenty eight with some span reads and, and Hoyd's letter, and then we'll have our interlude episode, dude, and we'll be on to part three. Hell yeah! Oh, Crazy. these interludes are great. I'm so keen for that app. That'll be good. I wonder when we're gonna finish this book. Probably like <laughs> early next year. Like yeah, oh, twenty twenty four, dude. We'll be rereading Words of Radiance on the tenth anniversary. Hell yeah, tenth anniversary, and in the year that Stormlight Five comes. Oh, out. what a great year! It's gonna be the year of Stormlight. The the podcast is gonna blow up, folks. Yep, just like the sun at the end of Book Five. There yes. we go. Oh my goodness! Look out for your uh, Sun Roshar NFT. Uh, <laughs> Dude, the child has future sight and he's watching the sun blow up, but we're just not there yet. Bro, there somebody uh, sent us fan mail and was like, uh, I, or maybe it was a comment on YouTube, but they were like, I actually thought the crypto NFT joke Jimmy made was real for a second because he just seems <laughs> crypto, bro. And I've never been so hurt in my life. I don't know why, but all the like great, the great like loving burns are always like Jimmy related. And, uh, let's I'm, keep I'm, it that way, guys. Let's keep yeah, it. I, don't, I can't handle them. <laughs> I, I act like a fool, so I, I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Don't hurt me, guys. I can't take it. Jimmy can <laughs> Jimmy can take the heat. It's He's got enough Kremlin. cryptocurrency. Yeah, I'm just a Kremlin, dude. I, I, without my hoardlings, I'm nothing. <laughs> I'm nothing. All right. I think we'll wrap it up, though. Yeah, great, so. great, great time this week. It's, I'm, I'm glad to be back. Me too. Thank you, as always, guys, for accompanying us on this episode of Lost in Roshar. Remember, the most important chapter a man can read is the next one. We'll see you next week to dive into chapters 26 and 27. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave us a review on whichever platform you listen on. It goes a long way for the show. And if you have feedback, questions, or theories, span read us at lostinroshar at gmail.com. And we'll see you next time on Lost in Roshar. Hey, remember, keep that safe hand covered.